Okay, well, welcome to Tomb of Annihilation. Oh boy. It'll be different. <laughs> it's not as bad as it sounds. <clears throat> now, is this, is this, uh, from the, the old, uh, Tomb of Horrors? Is it related to that? Uh, it yes, it is. Bad guy, yeah. The... Uh, it's still the, uh, in the end, and it's not any spoiler. Yeah. Um, Yes, it is the same bad guy, and they just uh, expanded it and made it a whole dangerous adventure instead of just a single module. Because I remember like 1984 trying to go through that thing, and I think we made it like one room in and said, okay, let's go and find something else to do. Because <laughs> <laughs> the original Tomb of Horrors, that one, to make it through that thing, you had to have a pretty big set of balls. Just no saying. kidding. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're out here. Sorry. Uh, you're all right. Uh, we'll go over uh, just a few quick house rules with you all. Um, in 5e, you get inspiration. And inspiration is awarded to you for, uh, you know, just any time I want. When you do something cool, save the party. Uh, if another player thinks that you should have inspiration for an attack or for an action, uh, I'm more than happy to give it to you for that. And it will allow you, you can use an inspiration once per turn to uh, do a reroll on like a saving throw or an attack and so forth. And you can have up to three of them accumulated at any given time and they do come in handy and um, in 5e you have advantage and disadvantage advantage uh, you roll two dice and take the higher disadvantage you take roll two dice and take the lower and when two characters are flanking a creature uh, you have advantage on your attack rolls and let's see um, diagonal movement is five feet uh, there is no such thing as a five-foot step in 5e. Just so you know. <laughs> uh, however, you can move, attack, and then finish out your movement if you so desire. Um, attacks of opportunity occur when you leave the threatened range of a creature not when you move in only when you move out um, and we'll get into cover and everything else just share the sheet there you go <laughs> um, we are going to play meat grinder mode however I have modified it from uh, what they were suggesting uh, when you reach zero hit points you are unconscious and you are bleeding out and if you uh, look on your character sheet stuff on the main tab down at the bottom in the center you have death saving throws oh yeah I saw that uh, yes uh, you get to roll uh, you know once per once per turn and normally you have to beat a 10 in order to pass your death saving throw uh, three successes you get one hit point and you're stable three failures and your character is dead. Seems kind of harsh. 
<laughs> and um, we'll go over hit dice when we actually take some damage but for level one through three uh, the DC of the death save is 10 4 through 6 is 12 and 7 plus is 15 as you get closer to your mission objective um, it becomes harder not necessarily to stay alive but to pass those saving throws just due to the nature of what is happening in the world and when you're in the jungle uh, you gotta drink at least two gallons of fresh water per day and it doesn't necessarily have to be water if you can drink two gallons of ale or wine go right ahead and if you haven't uh, you've got to uh, make a constitution saving throw and if you fail it uh, you get one level of exhaustion for the upcoming day So, should be fun. <laughs> That's one word for it. <laughs> and would you all like to know each other beforehand or not? Uh, do you know me? I'm... I don't really care one way or another. I haven't put in much thought to an actual backstory. Okay. We could like just start kind of like we've already met like once or twice and agreed to do something to, together or something and just start from there if that's all right. Uh, Gets over be... kind of the the awkward beginning but leaves a lot afterwards. <laughs> uh absolutely. Okay, uh for you're in the town of Water... I'm sorry, you're not in Waterdeep. You're in Baldur's Gate. And... Much better. Yes, uh, a large settlement. And for the past several days, uh, the talk on the streets and in the taverns have... It's all been centered around the so-called death curse. And it is a... Um, it's a wasting disease that's afflicting everyone who has ever been raised from the dead. And the victims start growing thinner and weaker every day and slowly but steadily sliding toward death that, you know, they once beat. And when they do die, um, they can't be raised again and, and you know uh, scholars and temples and magic users are all at a loss to explain this curse that has affected the entire region and p quite possibly the world but once you're dead you are dead well how frequently are people being raised from the dead yeah, it's the same as any other campaign, you know. Well, I would imagine not frequently. <laughs> uh, Player-wise, uh, it, it it is truly affecting a lot of people through the world, especially uh, you know. The rich ones that can afford to be brought back from the dead or so have yeah, the that's desire. What I was All the rich people dying. Oh, what a pity. Power what a complete people. loss on the world. Power to the people. One percenters. <laughs> you guys remember Ice Pirates, right? Power to the people. Throw off your chains. No, I don't remember that one. <laughs> you never saw Ice Pirates? You would like Ice Pirates. It was from the 80s. 
who was that? Who was that guy? He had that show Las Vegas or something. Robert. Not Robert Urich. Maybe I was just, anyway. No, that's a good movie. Ice Pirates. Check it out. It's cheesy now, but it's a comedy. Very fun. Anyway. I definitely will. But you have been invited to the to a home of a retired adventurer and merchant here in Baldur's Gate and uh, her name is Sandra Sylvain and uh, you go up to um, her house and you know you knock on the door and a uniform attendant leads you up this grand staircase to the third floor and he ushers you into this wood panel room. There's a fireplace, there's comfortable chairs, and a heavy table bearing goblets of bearing goblets and bottles of wine. And you can see hanging on the darkly paneled walls are maps and sea charts and you see racks and shelves and cabinets holding hundreds of more rolled up maps and charts and near the fireplace uh, you see this person sitting in an overstuffed chair and you really can't tell if it's male or female because only the person's head emerges from underneath this heavy blanket and you see that they're wearing this embroidered hood and silver mask that's concealing their face and you know even the person's dry raspy voice provides no clue and you hear help yourself to some wine and seat yourself friends I hope that I may call you that but of course you had me at wine. <laughs> so you all grab a goblet or two of wine and grab a seat and she starts telling you that you know I was an adventurer many years ago and I died and I was raised from the dead and I learned my lesson so I closed that door to that stage of my life and uh, become a merchant and she uh, takes a deep breath and the death curse that you have heard about has struck me and I don't know how much longer I'll last before I perish and the clerics have no help to offer at all they're stymied by what is happening so I took matters into my own hands and I reached out to my contacts in the Harpers. Um, Five E has um, factions like uh, the Harpers, the Zentorum, which is a mercenary guild. Uh, there's a I'll get through the list here after a bit with you because it really doesn't matter but uh, my contacts in the Harpers have learned that the cause of the death curse is a necromatic artifact called the soul monger and according to their sources the soul monger is somewhere in the land of Chult and the Chult is a peninsula peninsula ringed with mountains and choked with rainforest and there's enormous reptiles savage goblins and an army of undead that prowl its jungles and ruins and mapping the place has always been pretty much impossible and not a whole lot is known about the region's current geography once you get a few miles inland from the coast 
and she goes on to tell you that she's worked uh, from dozens of uh, sea charts and log books and journals of explorers and she has assembled everything that is known about the current state of Chult into one map and she's like uh, I'll provide it to you uh, if you undertake my mission but I want you to go to Chult and find the soulmonger and stop it and stop the death curse that is affecting more than just our region of the world And if you decide to uh, take on um, this mission and you are successful, uh, you know, I will reward you with a very rare magic item each. You had me a death curse. <laughs> hey, when I, hear, when I hear jungles and dinosaurs and all that, I'm like, where do I sign up? <laughs> I'm a druid. I'm loving that plant life. I'm a bunch of vegan hamburgers and I'm ready to go. And, you know, she's, uh, she's like, I, I know you all are not the most experienced troop, but you're my only hope now. And uh, since you're ready to undertake my mission, um, when you're ready to depart, um, I will transport us all to uh, Port Nanzaru which is the only major settlement in Chult. And I've been there several times before, so, you know, there's little chance that we'll have a mishap during uh, teleportation. And once there, uh, I will stay with an old friend of mine who's one of the seven merchant princes who rule the city. And I know that undertaking such a mission, um, you will have to buy some supplies of your own. And with that, uh, she points over to the table, and you can see that there's these bags of gold. And inside the bags are 50 gold pieces each. So... Um, when you were creating your character, if you didn't account for spending 50 gold, we'll do that here very shortly. And uh, so you all are willing to uh, take on this dangerous mission and save my life and hopefully the lives of a lot of people around the world? Oh yeah. Death and I are old friends. And with that, she uh, uh, hollers for the uh, the servant, and he comes in, and she tells him to give you all the map. That's a big map. Uh, yeah, very wilderness. Uh, up at the top in the middle is uh, the port that you will be going, but you can see how much of the island is um, uncharted. And is it like how many hexes we can move in a day? Oh, it says down there one hex is 10 miles. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. 
And where's she talking about dropping us off? Uh, right at the top in the middle. Yep. Oh, okay. Hmm. So, just so I'm clear, make sure I, was, I heard the whole thing. She's going to dump us off at Port Nazaru or whatever. Yeah, Nazaru. Yeah, and uh, and then we're going to get all uh, supplied up, and then uh, we're headed off into the jungle, and then. Yeah, uh, correct. Um, okay. No one knows where the location of the soulmonger is, so it's going to be a lot of exploration and clue finding on your part. Now I'm upset I'm not the bard that's going to sing Welcome to the Jungle when we start going. I was going to say, there aren't many heavy metal bards out there. There should be. Um, You're going to die, baby. <laughs> that's right. It's totally metal. Monster's like, what are you doing? Banging my head. What is it? You stupid? He's a fan. Um, are we... Should we get mounts? Or... Well, she has arranged for you to have some equipment when you get there. Um, she wasn't quite sure where you want to go first. Uh, and this is uh, truly what direction you go is 100% up to you. Uh, okay. But she, she has made... Um, a few purchases on your behalf um, of supplies that are waiting there for you. Okay. And uh, the 50 gold, um, that's if you want to buy any other items beforehand. Personal items. So do I put 50 in my character sheet on top of that? Can I have, uh, yes, you would. Okay, All right. Because you were traveling, I think Sean. I know Sean's already spent his fifty. Okay, I didn't. And I think I probably did. And honestly, you want to uh, probably shop in Baldur's Gate instead of in Chult. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Great, yeah. am I not going to be able to get my other axe silvered and chult? Uh, yes, you'll be able to get your axe silvered and chult, but you might pay a little bit more. The uh, costs of being thematic. <laughs> so, you're just saying we, we can just shop it right out of the... Well, I guess we should... Do we have a list of what she's given us? I mean, I want to buy a horse and find out she's giving me a horse. Um. Like okay, I guess to the other, the rest of the party. Are we planning on going down one of these rivers, and more to the interior to explore, or overland, or what's our plan here? Do we have a plan? Any ideas? Thought like before we get there, I think first thing we're gonna need is is get there and see how people <laughs> normally travel through there. Well, I'm just looking at the map, and there's there's these rivers that come from the port, uh, Sashin Star and Tirki, and either one of those can drop you further down towards the middle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She she naturally assumed that you would probably take the river. Uh, however, there are ships that you can charter to take you around somewhere else on the island. But she has uh, purchased a canoe for you. Uh, there's some healing potions. Um, and let's see if I've got an image. Is this something you can drop into the party sheet? And then we can... Inventory... And it's in the party sheet, and I need to add you all to the party sheet. Hang on, is the undead territory that whole area that's marked? In Cholt has a large 
zombie problem from past incidents that have happened in Chilt. And some areas are light zombies, other areas are very heavy. Is it reasonable to expect to maybe once we get there hire a guide? Someone that knows the interior and can help us? Or is that uh, yes. I don't know how much a guide costs. What does the rest of the party think of that? Should we maybe wait till we get there and get a guide and have him maybe or her give us some advice on best way to approach the interior? Probably, yeah. We're going to need a local. Like, we're going into kind of unknown, like, jungle territory. Right. Yeah, a guide would be nice, but also just looking at this map, if we were to go inland through a river, we'd probably want to do River uh, Social Star, because it looks like the other one is going to just like end right in the middle of zombie land. There's the other one is, uh, like I said, you could hire a boat to take you around to this Kitcher's Inlet, and then take that River Olam, that goes even deeper into the jungle and Ocean Star. Yeah, but I feel like that's going to cut into Zombie Land, too. Maybe we could. Uh, do we know anything about this Camp Vengeance? Does uh, this merchant die? Uh, you will. Um, the Order of the Gauntlet, which is um, paladins and knights and so forth. Uh, they do have a presence in Chult, uh, and, you know, they're just there trying to beat back, um, the zombie menace. And Camp Righteous is one of theirs, as well as Camp Vengeance. And, um... Since you will be in the jungle, she has provided you with uh, two rain catchers. And I be. I forget, how do you split these things from the party sheet? Like, you just drag the whole thing over and it gives you one? Or? Uh, yeah, just drag it over and it'll give you one. And... And Discord, I'm going to throw in a picture of the... of a modern-day rain catcher. <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's basically, um like a TP tripod and it's got this canvas that drapes down to uh, catch the water and um, it can catch two gallons of water per inch of rainfall and each one of them will hold up to eight gallons uh, she gave you uh, four extra water skins and since the jungle is a dangerous and unknown place, she has even provided you with six potions of healing. Alright, so I have proficiencies in alchemist supplies and a herbalism kit. Am I going to be able to make healing potions? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I don't know the rules. I know there are rules, I just don't know what they are, but... <laughs> I would yeah. think those would be the two that you would need if you were to do so. And that, that was kind of the point of taking that, but also not to shoot myself in the foot, but I assume I would probably need to find uh, ingredients since we're going to be in the middle of fucking nowhere. 
Yes. Also, you... healers kits are very good. Uh, I'm gonna buy one because they can like stabilize somebody without a roll. And if you take the feet, they can heal. But I don't know if they can heal. If you have if you have yeah. healer, they can. Yeah, if you have the healer feet, then you can uh, use it as a heal. Uh, but uh, just even having one, because you can just run over and, and without rolling, you can stabilize somebody. And you get 10 uses out of it. I took a fourth of everything, so plus a rain catcher. Ah, uh, damn it! Now, Sheer, are you a barbarian again? Uh, not this time, but I've got one on standby. <laughs> You're ready. <laughs> I am always ready. <laughs> if if Bjorn lives long enough, I'm going to be an Aldrich Knight. Oh, okay. And Diego, you're a rogue. Yes. And then the cleric had a family commitment. Well, we, th we he'll probably be a cleric, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. We'll yeah, I, I'm, I think he was... Th he had like two or three things juggling, but probably... Probably go. He'll probably go cleric. I don't know. Maybe he'll go wizard or something. Maybe he'll try something different. But I know his favorite class is cleric, or or the one he's played the most at any rate. Alrighty. Okay. Uh, there's my missing one. <laughs> okay. Um. So, you know, you go out and you do your shopping and initial planning, and um, she, you all meet back up, and she, I need the town map. Okay, uh, yeah, she, uh, says the magical words, and she teleports you to the port city, and you appear in this tropical city under the blazing sun, and you hear the familiar sounds of, uh, creaking ropes and, uh, the slapping waves and heavy barrels rolling across the cobblestones as they're unloading ships and you hear voices shouting and cursing sometimes it's in an unfamiliar language filled with these clicks and deep breaths and sing-songy words that make it sound almost musical and the aroma of unfamiliar spices and tropical fruit mixes with the smells of fish, tar, and canvas. And looking out beyond the port and I order some pad thai and a spring roll with pizza. <laughs> And you are in the harbor board. And beyond all that, you can see that the city is an explosion of color. Uh, buildings are painted in bright shades of blue and green and orange and salmon pink. And some of them, um, the walls are adorned with these giant reptiles and mythical heroes and every building sports baskets and clay urns full of these colorful flowers 
or they're draped in these leafy flowering vines. Uh, you can see minstrels uh, in bright clothing performing on street corners. Multicolored pennants and sun awnings flutter atop the city walls. Um, you can see children dressed in feathered hats and capes racing past you. And, you know, they're squilling in delighted terror as a street performer is cost wearing this costume of a big toothed lizard stomps and roars behind them. And the whole city is seems to be bustling, sweating, laughing, swearing, and singing. And the temperature in Chult, uh, well, it's very tropical, you know, just imagine the Bahamas, it's going to be hot. <laughs> Rainforest, uh, you can expect uh, showers periodically. So, most days you'll have a chance to uh, collect fresh water on your own. But it is hot and humid. And Sandra tells you that, you know, uh, you might want to attain lodging for the night, although, you know, it's noon. Um, if you want to, um, you know, hire a guide and head out, uh, you know, it's your mission. Um, she tells you that she is going to be staying at uh, the Villa of a Merchant Prince here in town by the name of Watanga Otamu <laughs> and that she will be staying there for the rest of the adventure and uh, you know she looks forward to seeing you again uh, when you complete the mission however it, should you need something during the mission or have any questions, uh, please contact her. And that's there. Need to turn on tokens. <laughs> but on the city map where she is going to be at is the big S that is a big S yes it is <laughs> And, uh, you know, she tells you uh, where you can uh, pick up the supplies that she's bought for you and so forth. And, uh, you know, points out a couple of places where you might be able to find a guide for Chult. We know where we're staying. I mean, we know where she's staying. It's tough to miss. But um, she's she recommends that you know um, uh, if you're looking for a wild time, you might want to find a room at the Thundering Lizard, or if you want a good night's sleep, uh, she recommends Kayla's House of Repose. <laughs> And area 18. I'm afraid to ask, but define a wild time. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, kind of like Poppy would enjoy. <laughs> okay, so just drinking all night, I got uh, Drinking, bar fights. And that's 24, 5. Well, drinking and bar fights certainly sound like my idea of a good time. This is Thailand, after all, so you know, it's kind of anything goes. 
Uh, we've got a buddy of ours uh, out of game for a minute, but uh, he was a Vietnam um, Air Force pilot, and he went back to Thailand uh, this year to find some information on some of the planes that him and his buddy flew, and he's decided he's moving back. He's going to move to Thailand. Uh, he found a, um, a place there to rent. He gets his food, he gets, um, he gets a cook, a maid, a chauffeured vehicle, uh, everything complete for like $1,200 a month. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like there. My dad drug me to Jeez. Thailand in 2004 and it was mind-boggling how cheap it was. I think we paid $16 a night for a room in a hostel. <laughs> it was something else. Yeah, it was, it was a different time. But, uh, no, my dad swears by that whole region. Vietnam, Thailand, loves them all. I don't know. It's, it's hot as hell and smells like ass. But, whatever. <laughs> different strokes, I guess. <laughs> Okay, and that's 18, and that would be... Yeah, the, the lodging uh, is the L on the port map down by uh, the market ward. Sweet. I don't need a wild time. I, I have no problem staying at the... the gentle repose or whatever it was Kayla's house of repose <laughs> Kayla's house of repose that's right sounds awfully hookerish but <laughs> that's okay whichever has the best alcohol and as you are walking through town down toward the market ward um, you see the town is normal, normally colorful, but uh, they're preparing for a special event that they have uh, every week. And you're seeing these medium and large dinosaurs that are pulling these two-wheeled carts, or they're hoisting heavy loads on the crane or and towing boats down through the canal and Meet the Flintstones. Meet the Flintstones. <laughs> and, uh, and just by picking up on people talking you know that tomorrow is going to be one of the weekly dinosaur races that every week uh, they have these brightly painted racing dinosaurs and they race throughout town. Haha, <laughs> sounds fantastic. <laughs> and out of character, uh, the dinosaur races are great if you're playing in person. Fantasy Grounds, it leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you see that all the streets are paved with either cobblestones or flagstones, and they have these really deep rain gutters. And sometimes uh, they're as much as two feet wide. And, you know, you see uh, the minstrels wandering the streets performing for anyone who will toss them a few co a coins. Uh, you can see walls erected that are dividing the uh, the town into the different districts like the Merchant Ward and uh, the Market Ward and the Harbor Ward and etc. And, and there are like I said initially, there are murals of dinosaurs and mountains and mythic heroes. And 
You see that most buildings are made of the stucco covered stone and they have tiny windows and you know that's uh, designed to uh, at, at street level and it's to help keep out the heat and the upper floors are generally uh, bamboo or thatched walls with these enormous windows to let in the breeze and they're all richly decorated and uh, sometimes you can even see uh, a walled yard or a garden and you notice that every building has either a cistern or wooden barrels to catch water running off the roof. All the city's water comes from the rain. And um, every public square is built around a fountain or a rain basin. And and due to the amount of rain, um, you can see water wheels built into the cisterns. Uh, there's rainwater running through spouts or channels turning the wheel and it's, you know, pumping the water into pools and turning millstones and powering bellows and lathes or saws. You know, just pretty much anything that you can dream up to make life easier by water powering it. But eventually... Amazing. <laughs> absolutely. And... Um, uh, you make your way to uh, Kayla's House of Repose and arrange some lodging. So what would you like to do now? I guess it's time to go shopping. I assume we're, this is like in the morning or is this at night or? Uh, Afternoon this, it sounded like. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's like 12.30, 1 o'clock. Okay, so early afternoon. So I guess it's time to well, do we want to try to find a guide first, or buy stuff, or what do you guys think? Hmm. Doesn't matter to me. We'll find something fantastic any way we go. <laughs> I feel like this, this is probably one of the few occasions where it'd be safe to split the party, so if y'all want to do some last minute shopping I can try and go and find a guide <laughs> well I was thinking if we find a guide then the guide might be able to give us some advice on if there's anything special we need to buy I mean I mean I'm going through the list of stuff here I'm looking at my inventory or maybe you know they'll point us in better directions to you know people who won't rip us off well the big thing is if we hire a guide and they say uh Okay, we got a canoe. We're assuming we're going down the river, but like, is this the right river? Or should we go around the other river? Yada yada. What dangers are on the river? Is one you know. canoe enough? I mean, there's supposedly there's going to be four of us plus a guide. I don't know how big of a canoe this is, unless it's some sort of Native American longboat we got going from here. Um, you know, the, uh, the canoe, the canoe will seat six, and should you need another one, say like we pick up a fifth player, I'll be more than happy to give you all another canoe. And that's all of our supplies and everything, too. Right, right. Okay, so, all right. So I'll start with a guide, then. Yeah, let's go find a guide. Okay, uh, well, you know, asking the uh, innkeeper uh, where to find a guide, she's like, oh, yeah, we, you know, a lot of people come here seeking their fame and fortunes, and as a uh, result, uh, guides will actually do some advertisement. And let me put these in order.
And there's a bunch of them coming at you. Four more. Well, that guy looks rough. <laughs> That's like a homeless person. <laughs> Will guide for food. Yeah, I like O'Hugh. And a 30 day advance. Yeah, he's totally not gonna run off with our shit. No, not at all. These guys come with their own tri triceratops. Five hundred. Uh... Oh wait, do they all require an upfront 30 day? Uh, a couple of them do. Um... This, and, this woman and, here says she'll waive her fee if we help her on her quest. Yeah. Uh, and guide us to places no one else has found. Uh, there's a local merchant prince by the name of Joe Ball. And Joe Ball uh, gets, uh, you know, like a commission <laughs> for guide services. The cat dudes are only four gold pieces a day with no payment up front. River and flask. Boy, Jobel does seem to have kind of a, a lock on the... Yeah, he does. He Which is kind of typical for the ass end of the world. Eco seems kind of naive. I appeal to those who find fulfillment in doing actual good in the world. Rid the jungle of evil, evil blah, blah, blah. The spirits of nature can return to their sacred place, live in peace, blah, blah, blah. Five plus three. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm still kind of reading. While you're reading, I'll be right back. The Multak's a dwarf, right? Yes. What does he think of Musharib and his quest to reclaim Moradin's gun? Which one? Oh, Musharib? Let me, let me refresh myself on. One of them said that they were pretty sure that he had... that uh, the dwarf has, like, monkey fever? Mad monkey fever. 
Yeah, so I mean, yeah, but a lot of them are talking shit about who, each yeah, other. Yeah, exactly. So. I mean, who who are we to believe, really? Unless we start maybe asking around to see if when which one's most honest. But then again, who knows, right? All right, I'm back. I was looking at. Uh, The druid, perhaps, because uh, his fee is negotiable. If we defeat any, uh, based on the fact that we destroy any undead we encounter, which, you know, chances like, are yeah, we're yeah. probably going to be doing anyways. Uh, and if not, and we have to run, and he won't run, he's going to get eaten. Well, I don't think I can support Hugh. He's only got one arm. <laughs> I mean, it's like... <laughs> but, you know, he's, he's tough. <laughs> it's all fun and games, so you're out in, the, out in the jungle, and the guide asks if you can help him wipe his ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you give me a hand over here? <laughs> Get a <it>, hand. <laughs> Crack me up. It's on. There is a Zaka, too, was one I was looking at. It's like picking a jury. Like, I'm going to strike... One, two, yeah. six, nine. Oh no, does anyone have any strong feelings towards any of them? You think I'm, not, I'm not sure I trust any of them, honestly. No. So. But if we were to pick like three, maybe we would all have one as a specific conclusion. Like yeah, some, that uh, was one of them that all, all three of us would have. Like one in common? Yeah, like maybe they'll just be one that we all have like kind of like, oh maybe this one. I don't know, anyone with a side quest who can, who will reduce their rate for it, could be fun. Yeah, yeah. That's why. I, uh, yeah. So those two, I thought were, uh, were pretty good. Add one or two layers of damage and some extra death. Hmm. And you know, you can always uh, try and barter with them, negotiate. And uh, the druid uh, is a member of the Emerald Enclave, and uh, you would know that that's an association of the druids. Um, you got Shargo, who is a member of the Flaming Fist, which is a mercenary company like the Zentarum. We're probably going to need much more gold if we want to keep a mercenary around. Right, because we only have, what, a... Between the three of us, we have 150, right? We haven't bought any supplies yet. Well, we got a bunch of stuff. But... Well, yeah, we're supposedly we bought before coming here because it's more expensive yeah. here. I'll let you do your shopping in Baldur's Gate. So I'm more of... Uh, of it, like I'm more leaning towards the druid and Azaka, because they they're not talking too much shit about everybody else. They're making talking themselves up pretty good, and uh, you know we can negotiate on rates. I'm still I'm still I'm down to five. I'm still <laughs> going through them. I also have a dark horse, uh, Salida. Salida, I'm thinking, because, like, I, I say dark horse because I'm thinking she, she talks too much shit, to maybe, to maybe be trustworthy. But at the same time, if everybody else here sucks, that's exactly what, that's exactly what, uh, 
what somebody would probably say if they can't get work. <laughs> That's like a dangerous pick. Technically, my character is already based on a pseudo mercenary archetype, so I'd say I, as a player, would say that Shago is. Because I, as a character, would probably not trust another mercenary. We don't really have the goal to keep a mercenary loyal. Yeah. Technically, they all cost the same, but... On well, that note, yeah, all of the all of the thirty day advanced people are probably like at the bottom of the. Well, that's a hundred. That's that's a hundred and fifty. We'd have to get. We don't have the money to pay for right. that. Honestly, we just don't. I got it down to four. I'm down to four. So I'm having trouble. Who's your four? So I've got Kawasha because it's five gold pieces per day, but it's negotiable and it doesn't say anything about a fee up front. And then uh, Musharib. Um, so uh, I can guide you five gold per day, nothing up front. Um, but he doesn't say anything about waving the fee, so I'm going to get rid of it. And Musharib? Musharib. And then there's River, who trash talk is, talks all of Joe Ball and is no good funky. But he says he'll do it for four, it's two of them, and they'll do it for four gold per day. But no Musharib will, will waive his fee if you help him on his quest. Right. And he's kin, man. You gotta help your kin. <laughs> yeah, but he he looks like a zombie already. Look at him. He looks like death warm. He's like ugh, like a dwarf after a three day bender. <laughs> and then and then a, a Zaka, uh wants to go to Firefinger. I kind of like Kawasha because um, there's nothing up front. It's five gold per day. It's negotiable. And it's my understanding we're going to run across a bunch of undead to destroy anyway, so... Yeah, so that's what I mean. If we... He says any we encounter. So if we don't encounter any... Yeah, it's not like we have to go looking for it. So yeah, whatever yeah. Whatever we come across, if we agree And to kill chances it. are we're going to probably have to fight it. And honestly, can you really have too many druids in the party? Same. And like the only like thing that somebody said about him was that he's a charlatan and we have our own druid and maybe our own druid would spot that I don't know does 5e have the equivalent of sense motive insight, insight. basically insight I have a plus 3 insight can I look can I check to see if I actually think he's a charlatan um, Probably like during like yeah, that would be like you watching him do something. Yeah, when you actually go to meet him. Right now, you're just looking at the trade papers. <laughs> oh, I see. All right, so I'm down to three: River, Kawasha, and uh, Azaka. What are your guys' three? I have Azaka, Kawasha, and Salida. Okay, so River's out of there, and then uh, Bjorn. Bjorn? I'm thinking Kawasha, Azaka. Uh, I don't know. I still kind of like Musharib. I I don't know about you. I th I think he he. I think he means well, but that seems like an extra, extra, extra layer of getting our asses kicked. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like he's just gonna run at the first 
thing he sees that's bigger than the than a. How much ass kicking can one group withstand? Yeah, basically. All right, so we should uh, just decide between Azaka and Kawasha. So we can just go to one. We can like roll a dice or something, go to the first one, and see if we can negotiate for free. And if the first one says no, we go to the second one. Yeah, we could do that. Who do you want to try first? Is, uh, hold on, you look at these guys. Oh, my God. Well, Azaka said she will waive the fee if we help her. Like, right. just period. So if we just go up and say, we will help you, she will waive the fee. Uh, so if we like her evenly with Kuasha or more, then then we can go that route right, right away. Uh, or we can go to Kuasha and just say, hey, yeah, you know, if you will waive your fee, we will destroy any undead we encounter. I kind of, I'm kind of leaning towards Kawasha because it's easier to just say, yeah, any undead we come across, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna destroy. Okay, we get it. Now get your shit. Let's go. Yeah. Versus Azaka, where it's like, okay, let's, we are going to, let's go head to Firefinger, which is, who knows where. I'm yeah, and I'll, uh, and also, if we go to him first. If he says he won't do it for free, or we don't come to terms, or something seems off, we just go to Azaka, and she'll waive the fee if we just agree to it. Well, I'm sure he's not going to waive the fee. He's not going to go down to zero. Eh, maybe. No, we could we could start at zero. Yeah. And then maybe punch him in the throat till he agrees on zero. Um. And I mean, if he wants like a good berry or some of our magic created water, I mean, we can take it out of his cut. He's a druid. He can make his own. <laughs> Unless he is really a charlatan. That's right. Or... In which case, we're all fucked. We can... But also, if he can create that, if he isn't a charlatan, then maybe our druid doesn't necessarily have to memorize that spell every day. That's a good thing, because currently don't really have it memorized. <laughs> so, out of, out of curiosity, why, if we're going to take our magic food and water out of his cut, would he not then turn around and charge us for his magic food? Because that'll be part of the negotiation. All right, you guys negotiate. I'm going to go use the bathroom. Here, bathroom. <laughs> All right, let's go see Kawasha. Okay. Uh, where the hell is he? Okay, um, yeah, uh, you eventually lo locate Kawasha, and the, you see the six foot two, 180 pound individual, and his counterpart, Weed, uh, is three foot tall and weighs about 30 pounds dry. <laughs> and Let's pull up a uh, I gotta say, I feel like I might have miscalculated my character's weight if this druid is only an inch taller than me and thirty pounds heavier. Yeah, well, you know. Some are larger than others. And his creature, his companion, is a ve vegapygmy. And 
And they're also known as moldies or mold folk or mold men. And um, they're fungus creatures that lived in the dark forest. And they were spawned from dead humanoids or beasts that were killed by a type of uh, mold commonly known as russet mold. So, Fun. Part plant. But, uh, you know, uh, Kawasha uh, says, Welcome, my friends. What can I do for you today? Kawasha, my good man. Uh, we've been we are in the the market for a guide and i hear you're the best i hear you're fantastic and i brought my group here my my fellow party members if you would to uh convince them or convince one of them anyways that you're the man uh to be our guide see he doesn't really he has a thing against druids and uh you know we already got one in our group and so to take another one he feels a little weird about it and uh, you know, so but we know that you're the right guy for the group, and uh, we just want to kind of hear what can you what can you do for us? Like, what kind of special? What sets you apart from all the other guides here? Well, first of all, this is my homeland. I was born here, and I've lived here my entire life, and uh, I have explored. I won't say a whole lot of the jungle, but I have explored enough. Um, where is it in Cholt that you're seeking to find? I kind of like lean in closer like I'm going to whisper uh, but uh, I'm still going to kind of speak at the same volume and I'll be like and I'm like, we're looking for lost cities you know, civilizations uh, long gone uh, we're looking to just kind of explore our way through maybe make a little bit of money on the way you never know what we're going to find and we hear it's fantastic out there dinosaurs even I haven't even seen one yet I just got here and we want to get out there and we want you to come with us uh, so uh, what kind of services uh, as, a, as a guide do you offer do you have any special services that you offer well, uh, I am well versed in the local flora and fauna, and, you know, like I said, uh, Chold is our home, and we can guide you like no others can, and uh, if ah, you're seeking... Flora and fauna, that's, that, that means you can help us get food, right? We're not going to starve out there with you, is that right? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, that is correct. That is great. That is great, and I'm glad that that's part of your whole fee that we already saw on your uh, ha on your advertisement. Now, uh, the part that's negotiable, we're definitely definitely in the market of uh, taking out all these undead that we encounter. That that is not a problem on our on our hands. So I was just thinking. So can uh, can we just call that as as like, hey, you join us, you help us out, we go over there, we kill all the undead for you that we see, you. maybe we find a couple of these lost cities, and, uh, you know, we call it square. How does that sound? I'll stick out my hand, like, ready to shake. And, and, and <laughs> <laughs> if you want to roll, if you want to roll, I'll, I'll, I'll drop a roll. Uh, so you're offering him no gold, but you'll help destroy any undead, right? Absolutely. Un uh, yes. Absolutely. Uh, he's wearing 27 pieces of flair. And he's also, <laughs> he's also agreed to uh, make sure we do not starve, because it's part of his all-inclusive package of zero gold. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, I'm just kind of in the back rolling my eyes and subtly it's shaking my head. Line. It's a buffet. It's a <laughs> Jungle exploration. Well, uh, I, 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 I gotta on, say, make him look like a fool. Make him look like a fool. Just shake my hand. Now. Come on, I, on look, I, you it. You look at him, roll his eyes. He would hate it. It would be hilarious. I, and <laughs> and that, that is a tempting offer. Uh, you know, however, you're asking me to risk my life for free. Oh, but you would not be risking your life alone, my friend. We got your back. You're gonna be one of us. You and your friend. We're going to be a team. We're a team out there. You don't understand. 
We got your back, you got ours. They're gonna write stories about us slaying undead, finding lost civilizations, riding dinosaurs, and the women, Quasha, the women. Oh my god, they love a story. The women. <laughs> I'll bet the veggie pig the veggie pygmy's excited. Oh yeah, my god, the, the 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 roses, the roses, veg and veg pygmy, the roses. You wouldn't believe yeah. how they bloom. I uh, 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 that is a uh, you know you you make it sound very interesting, but still, uh, uh, we do have our own expenses. Uh, you know, we we will need some gold. What kind of expenses would you have here? I mean, you know this area very well. I mean, do do what? What other things do you require to perform your job? Well, you know, I don't live out in the jungle my entire life. <laughs> so, what do you need? What can we do to help and expedite this process? Because I have a dinosaur race I need to watch. <laughs> I gotta see Diego. You're really good, but at this point, Balkoff would have bullied him into paying us for the honor of. The so I'm not sure what you're doing wrong, but you really need to kick it up a notch. Just saying. I mean, that's that's not wrong. <laughs> How he would have used some twist. Uncultured, logic. just uncultured people. <laughs> Unbelievable. We come here to this island on the edge of the known world, and I'm bringing the uncultured ones. Oh yeah, you just wait. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Come well, on, don't. My hands getting tired. My hands getting tired. Come on, put, we have a dinosaur race to 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 put, watch, put and you down. must know. You must know where the best alcohol is. Uh, rest assured, I, I I can point you to a good time in town if that's what you want. Uh, I I would um. You know, I would have to go, um, to be how fair. Much is he, how much are you willing to reduce your fee for the undead slain? Because in my, I'm going to say my line of work, although technically I would just be starting, but in my line of work, people are usually supposed to be paying me for the slaying of monsters, not the other way around. We just don't want to go hungry out there, Quasha. Uh, he laughs and he's like, "Well, you know, if you're in the jungles of Cholt, uh, you'll be slaying them anyway. <laughs> yeah, do not expect to survive the jungle without encountering the undead. And you know, um, uh, I, I would go down to uh, two gold pieces a day." drive a hard bargain, Quasha. A hard bargain, a hard bargain indeed. One gold piece a day it is. Hand goes uh, back out. <laughs> I think you missed... Come mis on, we're a team. We're I, a team. I think you misunderstood. Two gold pieces a day. Quasha, there's no I in team. Or, or, I tell you what, you, you, you've made such a tempting offer um, uh, I'll, I'll give you a counter offer you help me destroy any undead that we encounter and I'll waive my fee up front but I, I want a percentage of the take any treasures I want a quarter just give him the two gold pieces a day. You know we're going to, in theory, we're going to make a lot more than, we're talking 30, 60 gold pieces a month. I, I think we could probably squeeze that out of, well, let me ask you, Quonset, are we going to, uh, are, are there, tr is there treasure in that jungle out there, or are we just going to be running around killing dead people? Oh, yes, uh, we have a, a lot of things have happened in Chult, and okay, and 
Uh, give me just a second to flip through the book here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I just... <laughs> so I ask him a druid question. What's the ratio of bananas to rum in a banana jack? <laughs> uh, one quarter banana, six parts <laughs> rum. <laughs> Uh, when, I was, when I was 20, I went to a party, and there was this girl there that was, she was a friend of mine, and she was actually on acid, and she was trying to make strawberry, uh, strawberry daiquiri, so she's got, she's got the rum in there, way too much rum, and she's, she's got this big box of strawberries, and she's, she's peeling off the, the stem, and throwing it in the daiquiri, and throwing away the strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, 50 50. So I'm just sitting there. I just arrived. I'm like, Sandy, how's it going? She's like, oh man, it's great. You know, and she's all high. And and then she makes this daiquiri. It, there was a few strawberries in there because it had a red tint. But for the most part, it was just the stems out of it. And uh, yeah, they all they all slobbered that stuff down. And I, I to this day, oof. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be one rough what the hell was I thinking the next day but, so, uh, I drink, drink beer <laughs> <laughs> smart move <laughs> yeah. uh, and he tells you that uh, you know uh, even though it's wild right now Chult does have a rich history and you know it, it was a thriving section of the world before the uh, spell plague uh, took effect and um, that was a couple of hundred years ago um, it's been a while since I looked at the spell plague but uh, as a result of that time Cholt was uh, pretty much split off from the mainland. And uh, the god Uptal. ETAO. Uh, was the primary. Um, uh, well, he's the patron deity of Cholt. Uh, he was known as the father of the dinosaurs, the creator of Chult, and um, he was highly revered. And you know, uh, there are still lots of fortune to be found out there in the jungle. And if we survive. I, I, I won a quarter of everything we find. So I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that this is now in lieu of the two to five gold pieces per day. Like, that's off the table completely. Uh, correct. Okay, so I kind of I whack Diego on the back of the head and say, good job, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Way to cough up a fourth of our money. <laughs> savages. Savages everywhere. The lost art of the negotiation. Well, or you can pay him the two gold pieces a day and keep 100%. You just said that was no longer on the table. Well, Don't it, remind him of that. No, it's on the table. <laughs> what, what are you doing? My well, God. okay. If it's still on the table, then uh, fine. Uh, yeah, uh, he's yeah, he's I'll... giving he's giving you the option of not having to pay anything, but he wants a quarter, or you know, the lowest he'll go is two gold pieces a day, and you help destroy any undead. Let's take the two and call it a win. Or we can go talk. We can tell him we're going to be back later. And go talk yep. to Zaka and see what she says. Yep, Honestly, well... Two, two gold pieces as well. Is 5th edition more of a silver-based game, or...? Not really. It's more oh, of a okay, just, uh, yeah, no. 
in that case, I, I mean, just me trying to get it for free. Okay, well, okay, so this is yeah, just, that's all it really was. This is just uh, Diego Adams up there, um, trying to yep, trying to go full tight wad. All right, whatever. Hey, I got to stay rich somehow, despite the fact that he spends his gold everywhere. All right, well, do you want to talk to Zaka? What's the Zaka say? I charge five per day and require a 30-day payment up front. I'd rather just go with Quash. Agree to pay him the two a day. He doesn't want any up front, right? No, no uh, up front. So he was also kind of a good, a good look. So if we really want to go for it, but uh, 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 we can go uh, for it. Azaka yeah, is willing to waive it all if you help her with her quest. Yeah, I do because now, now that I've taken another look at that, I do want to ask, and I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask this guy, Kawasha, if he, without like calling out Azaka specifically, I'm just going to ask if he knows any reason that a wooden mask would be worth 130 gold. Or 150 gold, rather. Um, a, a normal wooden mask that you purchase at the store? No. Uh, however, there are some... Uh, you know, it could be a relic from here. I'm not sure I trust relics. Now, uh, would you like to talk to Azaka? Well, if we don't want to, if you're if you're having doubts about it, then I'm fine with going with uh, Kawasha. Yeah, I say we go full Kawasha. Yeah, let's go kill some zombies. <laughs> Looks kind of like Eddie Murphy. So, are we going the two gold pieces a day? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we'll put them in the combat tracker. Uh, that's a very Halloween-y combat tracker. Uh, yeah, I gotta change my icons back. <laughs> and what the hell was his? Weed? No. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, um, Kawasha goes, uh, so you're just seeking to explore the jungle and find your fame and fortune and riches, and uh, I have no problem with that. Uh, what kind of supplies uh, ha have you already purchased? Standing there with, like, the backpack and all my stuff with me. <laughs> yeah, same basically. You're like, oh, you know, the usual. And what they're talking about I'm as I sit in a canoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got a canoe like just like, you know, across from us, like extra water and rations and <laughs> yeah. yeah. And a couple uh, of rain catchers strapped to our backs, you know. <laughs> Uh, you see his little buddy uh, looks up at him and um, he starts um, uh, you see him gesturing and uh, he's tapping on his body rhythmically and uh, occasionally you'll hear this hiss and um, uh, 
<laughs> Kalasha just laughs and he's like, uh, uh, I agree, my little friend. This should be an interesting trip. <laughs> oh, sure, now I get to And uh, his partner's name, um, yeah, we're going to change that to it's. Uh, the Kulpai name actually means walking weed, so we're going to call him Weed. <laughs> I ain't trying with some of these. <laughs> so, if you got him, uh, he's like, uh, Well, uh, when do you want to set out? Well, sounds like some of us are interested in this dinosaur race tomorrow, so I would say maybe a day and a half, two days at the late. Who wouldn't be excited to see dinosaurs scampering about through the city? It must terrorize the folks, so. though. Do dinosaurs really scamper? Oh, oh no! Uh, we really enjoy the races, and it can be a great way to pick up extra coin. Ha <laughs> ha, fantastic. <laughs> oh, well, someone here is a gambling man. Is it really gambling if you always win? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, you know, no, it's, no, it's... then it's cheating. You're right, I've never won, but I've never lost either. Uh, we, we have people that come far and wide to come and watch and bet on our dinosaur races because you know we're the only world they we're the only place in the world that has them and yes they are dangerous but they are exciting as you watch them race through the streets of the town well, what kind of dinosaurs are we talking about Triceratops, or is this a T-Rex thing, or, or a bunch of you know, like uh, algae he, eaters? He kind of laughs, and, well, you know, um, the T-Rexes are uh, a little hard to control when you got them in town. Well, you know, they're just really hard to control anyway. And... Racism. and that's not what I, I would. I would say some kind of raptor, probably. And let me find the spot on the dinosaur races. Um, the, the, the T-Rexes, you know, um, occasionally they'll capture a juvenile and enter them into the races, but, you know, you'll see Allosauruses and Hadrosauruses and young Triceratops, maybe even a young tr tr Tyrannosaurus Rex or more. This sounds more like a stampede than a race. <laughs> uh, at times, uh, it can't be a stampede. I would not advise standing in the street during the race. What is a race but an organized stampede? So, since you want to see the dinosaur race, I will tell you what, uh, I will meet you at your accommodations. Uh, where are you staying? Anybody Kay. remember the whole name? Kaya's, Kayla's. <laughs> the Repose with a K. Yeah, the oh, Repose, that was I, yeah. I, I know exactly where you are, and that will give give me and we a day to prepare and pack our own supplies, and uh, I, I will meet you the morning after tomorrow at your lodging, and we will explore out into the jungle. 
if uh, you if you don't know where the lodging is, just look for a great big L painted in the street. <laughs> and, uh, apparently we, we're all staying there. We're camped out right next to that big L. Not the big S. The big S, that, that's not going to help. Big okay, L. we will search for the uh, big L. <laughs> Actually, I think there's a big neon sign out front with a flashing L. <laughs> so what do we need on in terms of inventory? I mean, I have the standard... Uh, adventures pack or whatever that came with the druid. As he walks away, I want to just yell, See you the morning after tomorrow! As he's really far away, like waving really high. <laughs> uh, he just looks back and shakes his head and continues on, and you can see that him and Weed are having a conversation and as I walk off into the distance. <laughs> and I'll take a deep breath and smile and walk off in purpose wherever we're going. Uh, however, I am going to backtrack just a little bit before they walk off. Uh, when you're all talking about, you know, exploring Chult. And, uh, he's uh, showing you areas that, uh, you know... Uh, there's more zombies in this area than this area and you know it's dangerous and um, he's like anybody um, exploring Chult needs to get a um, a charter of exploration from the Flaming Fist up at Vol Fort Bulgarian Do we not have that by default? Uh, no, you do not have that by default. And uh, he he tells you that uh, it's twenty gold pieces, and uh, he would highly recommend that you get one because firsthand he's seen what the flaming fist will do has done to people that have explored without the permit. That thing's 70 miles away. Uh, uh, I, I have a way to uh, obtain us a permit. For the 20 gold? For the 20 gold. And this is Kawasha telling us we need this? Uh, this is Kawasha. This isn't that plant freak show that he's got going around with him? Uh, no. Uh, from watching the, the plant, uh, all it does is tap on its body and hiss and maybe occasionally whistle. But as far as you can tell, it's not capable of any type of verbal conversation. Oh, okay. In a language that you would know. <laughs> So he has a way to get one without having to travel to 70 miles, and it's a requirement. Yes, it is a requirement. All right, I'll mark off the 20 gold. Thank you, uh, good sir. I wouldn't mark off the 20 gold just yet. I think we should talk to our... Uh, Patron? contact patron lady first Maybe well she, she did can... just fork over an extra 150 to us I assume she would request that we use that in order to obtain that charter but we may try I would assume that she would have known that we needed this charter so tough shit let's go talk to her <laughs> <laughs> onward then and if that doesn't work out then we'll re re uh <laughs> Pick this conversation up with our druid, with our new druid friend tomorrow at some point during or after the dinosaur race. All right, so let's go negotiate some more. <laughs> okay, so we're headed. Suddenly, to... I wish I was more verbal as a player. <laughs> and
map. Okay, uh, as you make your way to uh, Wakanga's the villa, um, He lives in a villa, much like you would expect someone who is a merchant prince of a uh, city at the ass end of the world. And, you know, it's a beautifully decorated villa, and normally just showing up at a merchant prince's house uh, unannounced unless you were a big hero or something you wouldn't get through the gate but uh, at the mention of uh, Sandra's name you know they uh, they let you in and he leads you um, the butler servant leads you into uh, this spacious well decorated richly appointed uh, living room and uh, you see this gentleman sitting and you can see that he is talking to uh, Sandra. She's still got the mask on and so forth, uh, you know, hiding the effects that the death curse has had on her. And, you know, Sandra does the pleasantries and introduces you all to one another. And she's like, uh, I really didn't expect to see you back so soon. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, my dear, we've come because we must be off. We must head out into the great world and find this cure that you have sought us to go find for yourself. However, to our complete surprise, apparently we require this specific form to allow us entry for the Flaming Fist. And so we've come to receive it from you because we uh, did not receive it when we originally left. We must have misplaced it somewhere, forgot to take it with us. Surely you must have that. Ah, oh, you're back for more money, I see. <laughs> uh... Madam, you wound me. We're only here to gaze upon the, uh, the, your beauty still. And though I cannot believe that it will ever diminish any longer, I trust in your word and we must be off. So anything you can do that might help expedite this process would be fantastic. Uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't really call it more money. A lot of us went shopping immediately, and you failed to mention this extra 20 gold expenditure. So if anything, this is on This is on uh, you. Yeah, yeah, you, you'll have to forgive me, fine, sir. Uh, you, you know, I, I spent so much time assembling the map so you might know where you were going. That it, it completely uh, slipped my mind, and she looks over at Wakanga and it's like, uh, can, can you take care of this? And Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, you definitely do not want to go into the jungle without a charter. The Flaming Fist, uh, they're, they can be quite ruthless to those poachers in the jungle. And uh, he walks over to a little table and he slides open the drawer and he puts his hand in and he... He comes back out and hands you 20 gold pieces. 
Oh, my liege, thank you so much. Your generosity knows no bounds. Now we must be off for adventure calls. And with a bow, I'll just turn tight on my heel and just strode off. Uh, thank you, kind sirs. Remember, time is of the essence. Uh, I am not the only one afflicted by this, and I can feel myself draining every day more and more. Then we shall be off. Okay. Um <clears throat> uh you you leave the merchant prince's villa and I'm assuming you're going back to find your guide. <laughs> Don't we still have to like go to Oh yeah, you know, let's give him the gold and he can get us the fucking thing. Yeah, yeah, we might as well we might as well meet up with him just so he can go get that immediately. And actually, let me rephrase that statement. Let's meet up with him and go with him to go get the stupid. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, you meet up with uh, Kawasha, and he's like, uh, "Yes, I, I see you have the gold for for the charter. I I will get that taken care of immediately." Uh, the uh, the flaming fist knows that the fort is can can be a a long journey and I will uh that they have representatives here that we can deal with. And if you would like, uh I will bring the charter by to you tomorrow. Excellent. Sounds excellent. And he takes your gold and bids you all good day. And if y'all don't mind, can we take ten here? Sure. Sounds good. All right. See you in ten.
Well, that might explain why you have diabetes now. No, <laughs> no it isn't the sweets that gave me diabetes, it's all the comfort food. <laughs> understand that. So, uh, he goes off to obtain your charter of exploration. We hope. You hope. And just explore the city Go spend the afternoon in a bar. Well, I, yeah, I, pretty much. I want for me, to, anyways. Sorry. For all of us, I kind of want to revisit this. What we keep talking about the stuff we buy. What did we buy? I mean, like for instance, as a druid, I have it says I I come equipped with a hunting trap. Okay. Uh, what's that? I mean, I, I understand it's a trap you set, but when it pulled it down into the character sheet, it has type, subtype, rarity, oh, hunting trap. So is this something that I will actually use, or is this useless crap that the game just automatically gave me? Uh, yeah, the, the hunting trap is the typical... Um Yeah, you step on the pressure plate in the center and it snaps closed. So, you know, it's good for hunting, maybe even early warning protection. As useful as we make it, basically, I guess. Okay. But, I mean, going through my list here, I don't know. Well. Like, thank God I've got a mess kit. For me, what I got... Um. I picked up a climber's kit, which was a big thing. Uh, and uh, then I picked up... I got a, I got some better armor, uh, because my armor's cheap. I got some oil, rations, some rope. So, like, yeah, I mean, I got the basics. But, like, for instance, uh, are we going to need a tent? Or is it just assumed we have... I bought a tent as well, because I didn't have one, yeah. I guess like, I don't know, but I mean, I figured that would be a thing I would buy anyway, so. Yeah, the, a tent, a tarp, um, a, you know it's going to rain. That's a given. Okay. And judging by the, uh, the rain gutters that you're seeing on the streets, uh, you know, with some of them being two foot wide, um, might rain a lot. <laughs> okay. Which, thank you, uh, Deluxe Oz, for your nice little weather widget. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, Bob generated uh, like 30 days of weather in, ad in advance. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. I mean, I assume I can get a garbage bag to poke holes through. <laughs> uh, yes, you can. <laughs> I picked up a healer's kit too. Just to like help stabilize in case, you know, someone goes down.
and while you're shopping um, Diego um, you wanted to go drinking right yeah, so I'll, I'll go sample the, the sights, the smells, the tastes. Jungle women? Well, to a certain degree, yes. Uh, while you're drinking, um... You see the door to the bar open, and uh, in walks. Um, I would probably also be drinking, by the way. Okay. Uh, while you're all drinking, uh, you see this half orc walk into the bar, and she is wearing uh, this chain shirt and she uh, walks up to the bar and you know she orders a drink and she, you know she's uh, drinking it and you can tell that she's a little angry and she uh, starts talking to the bartender and uh, you know, he, he points at a couple of people in the crowd, and it's like, uh, you know, you, you might ask them. And, uh, you know, frustrated, she just simply turns around and shouts out, not really shouts, but in a loud enough voice to be heard. Um... Uh, she asked if there's any expeditions uh, going up the river Shoshin Star <laughs> that uh, she's, she's looking for uh, transport to uh, Camp Vengeance. I assume that's our cue. And, uh, let's see, um, uh, you can tell by the, um, by some of the insignia that she's wearing that she is a member of the Order of the Gauntlet, and they are, uh, Um, they are clerics and monks and paladins um, for their order, but their, their mission is they seek out and destroy evil before it gains, before it can gain a threshold. And, uh, you know, uh, I really need to make my way there. I've, I've got uh, some dispatches that I need to deliver to the camp's commander. And <laughs> I was so wrong about this place that I need help. I, I need someone to help get me there. And she's looking around the bar, and it's like, is anyone going that way? This is River Social Star, you? Yes. Well, I'll look to the other members of the group that are here, if or, or is it just me and Bjorn? I'm not Was sure. it? You're not yeah, there? I think, it's, I think it's just you and me. Yeah, yeah, just you two. Okay. I was shopping, although I just finished all my shopping. All right. Well, uh, you know, I'll, I'll like look to see if there's any interest. I kind of shrug and say, "Well, we might be going that way." Oh, Not immediately. Oh. Uh, she she comes over and she, and she's like, uh, "My name is Andrew Silver Tusk." And uh, I, I'm a priest of Torm, 
and I need to deliver myself plus uh, dispatches from my superiors to the Commander Breakbone at Camp's Vengeance. And, uh, you, you know, I was told all I needed to do was get here and I could buy a horse and ride out to the camp. But, <laughs> clearly, I was misled <laughs> that there's more. And I, I really need to get up there and I'm looking to join an expedition. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pr help you in any way that I can along the way. Well, how urgent is this message of yours? Well, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's not like it has to be there tomorrow, because, uh, you know, I know for sure that the camp is uh, many days away. We would also be on our own timetable, though we may be passing in that direction. That is on our way, I believe. Well, at the very least, it does give you a direction to go. <laughs> that it does. What kind of services could you offer, like, uh, to aid us in our in our uh, journey? We definitely don't want any dead weight. Although you look like you can handle yourself. Ah, uh, yes, uh, I definitely, indeed, I can, and, uh, you know, as I said, I, I, I am a, uh, priest of Torm, and, uh, you know, I, I'm good with a, uh, add her to the combat tracker, see her in a different light. Uh, I am really good with the mace. Not to mention uh, the powers uh, that have been granted me by my uh, deity. Well, what say you? And she's like, uh, you know, uh, Normally, I wouldn't do this, but uh, I, I would even give you uh, 20 gold pieces just to let me accompany you down the river. Well, how fortunate. That's the same cost as the uh, Flaming Fist. Uh, what was it? Uh, the charter. A contract, but charter. Yeah. Charter. Yes. Charter of Exploration. Okay. Right, out of character, we were totally supposed to meet her rather than go back and harass this other lady for the extra 20, weren't we? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> oh, okay, because I was about to start feeling bad. <laughs> and, uh, and she's like, oh, well, I'll be more than happy to cover the cost of your charter if you'll take me down to Camp Vengeance. Uh, works for me. All right. That's, that's capacity for the canoe, though. Well, then, if anyone wants to join us, they'll have to pro uh, provide their own canoe. Okay. Provide, uh, half work and three. Yep. So. Okay, so you're. Friendly, friendly. And friendly. And uh, she uh, promptly produces uh, 20 gold pieces and gives them to you. And she goes, uh, when do we leave? Oh, we're planning on hanging. Uh, day after tomorrow. Morning after tomorrow, yes. Yes, I guess that's the short answer. <laughs> no, I thought we were leaving tomorrow, actually. But she doesn't know. Well, tomorrow's the dinosaur races. We're staying for those. Oh, that's right. we got to stay for the dinosaur races because the rogue needs to see the dinosaur. Because he has a gambling problem. If you want to dress, and have an intervention. It's not a problem. 
It's yeah. an opportunity. She goes, well, if, if, if that's uh, uh, when you're leaving, uh, you know, so far you're the only people that I've found that are leading an expedition into the jungle, and, well, I guess that will have to do. Uh, where would you like f to meet up day after tomorrow? Just in front of our place, I guess, the same as when we're meeting... In the market ward, we the big L. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and she she's very thankful, and, and, and you know, as as another sign of my gratitude for helping me out, she buys you a round of drinks. I knew this was a good idea. See, See? I never lose. If you say so. <laughs> Bought one drink, got another for free. It's broken even. And you know, as she's uh, as as you're all sitting there drinking, and uh, you know, she's telling that she come from uh, the mainland, and you know, <laughs> when she gets back, she's gonna have a word with the person that told her. All you gotta do is buy a horse and ride out to the camp. And, you know, she talks a little bit about the, uh, the Gauntlet's mission here in Chult. And, you know, that's just a, a help to defeat um, the Undead Menace that's... Um, I'm sorry. Uh, and that's to help fight back uh, the undead menace that is uh, plaguing Chult. And, you know, she goes to tell on that, uh, you know, part of the dispatches that she's um, carrying are um, uh, concerning Camp Righteous. And uh, when the Order of the Gauntlet first brought their war against the undead to Chult, uh, they established a base camp called Camp Righteous. And unfortunately, it got overrun. So they moved a few miles further south and set up Camp Vengeance, which uh, hopefully is a much more um, fortified location against the undead. And, you know, she hates it. Her uh, brethren were lost in the battle and so forth. And, um, you know, she looks, uh, she looks forward to joining the crusade against the undead here in Chult. And, you know, a uh, little bit of payback for um, Camp Righteous. Well, according to our map, we'll be passing through Camp Righteous, or at least past it. We may end up fighting some undead there, sounds like, which will certainly placate our guide for a while. But if that does happen to be the case, based on what I know about zombies, you may need to be prepared to fight your former companions. Uh... If my former companions have fallen to the evil of the undead, I will happily end their suffering. I have no problem if they are undead. I will dispatch them. Well, I suppose that's as good an answer as any. And he just turns back to his beer. And, you, you know, she uh, buys you a um, another couple of rounds, and it's, to be a half-orc, she's semi-likable, and you can tell that she uh, really believes in 
what the Order of the Gauntlet is trying to do here. And eventually she's like, uh, gentlemen, I must retire, but I will meet you at your lodging day after, or morning after tomorrow. Okay. Right. Until then, until the morning after tomorrow. And she nods, and out the door she goes. And uh, uh, you, you now that she's left, uh, you can hear some of the uh, patrons in the bar are actually starting to laugh now. And uh, you know those stupid Order of the Gauntlet folks. They don't have any idea what they're up to. Yeah, we're going to defeat the undead and Chult. Don't they have any clue how many there are? And you, you start to, they start telling stories and what's fact and what's fiction. Who knows? But, in, in regards to them saying, well, don't they know how many there are? I'm going to just like, not to any specific person half mumble but like obviously loud enough for them to hear a lot less than there probably would be otherwise <laughs> uh, a couple of people look at you but uh, you know they look at your stature and they figure, well, you know, it's not worth arguing with them. Damn straight. But uh, you you hear all kinds of these uh, drunken first-hand stories about meeting a zombie or being attacked by, you know, 10 to 20 at once and they they tell of zombie herds that will roam. However, no one there talking has ever seen a herd of zombies. Yeah, I would have figured as much. Could be fact. Heard, could I, could be fiction. <laughs> a herd of zombies in a place like this, I don't imagine that any of these people would be here to tell these stories if they had seen probably even one zombie. Yeah. But uh, you can tell that yes, uh, all the rumors are true and there are a lot, a lot, a lot of zombies. <laughs> And okay, shall we fast forward to the next morning? Sounds good. Early morning, the streets are just bustling with people, and a vendor selling all their wares. Get your dinosaur race hat here, you know. Foam fingers for the uh, for your favorite dinosaur. Place your bets. Place your bets on today's race. Uh, foam fingers seems a bit uh, anachronistic. <laughs> yeah, how much of the the foam finger and the hat and and like a little flag or whatever? <laughs> uh, you can. What the hell is foam? You can get everything for just about, eh, let's say two silver pieces. All right, I'll do it, and I'll like put the hat on, and I'll be like cheering along, and want to want to get the one with the most dangerous looking dinosaur on it. <laughs> and uh, a couple of locals will point out where. Uh, the dinosaur races take place and uh, 
I just yeah I found it um, yeah they're they're talking about um, uh, this should be a really good race today that um, you know the big honker is back and he's this young Tyrannosaurus Rex that has won for a few weeks in a row. And, uh, you know, uh, you see these dinosaur names, Big Honker, Uptow's Favorite, Banana Candy, Bone Cruncher, uh, Grung Stomper, Scarback, Banana Candy, in the book. <laughs> Did not make that up. <laughs> Sounds like the title of your sex tape. <laughs> hey, don't tell people about that. <laughs> you may have seen me in a little movie I like to call Banana Candy. <laughs> Uh, Scarback, Nasty Boy, Jungle Princess, and Mountain Thunder. Nasty Boy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nasty Boy and Banana Candy got together. <laughs> <me. laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Anyway, my money's on Banana Candy. <laughs> nasty, nasty boy, he could pull it off. He could pull off the upset. Nasty boy for the win. <laughs> and uh, do you want to place a wager? Yeah, my money's on this turning into a complete disaster and the first encounter of this. That that's my wager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm going to hold on to my money. I'm not even paying attention to the betting. I'm just, I'm just like sitting there waving the flag with the big foam finger and everything, cheering on, trying to like when, when big honker comes out, I want to see if I can get the whole crowd to go honk, 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 like some kind of like crazy sports event. I uh, guess I, uh, you, you know. Uh, you see these uh, dinosaurs uh, start to parade in front of you before the race. Uh, you know, they walk the course as much as they can with the dinosaur to get the crowd's attention and show them. And you see uh, everything from, there's a Tyrannosaurus Rex, a young Triceratops, Hadrosaurus, uh, Allosaurus and Ankylosaurus. A, uh, you see Scarback, and he is this young Tyrannosaurus, and he is appropriately named because you can see the scars down his back from uh, other races, and you know, the crowd saying, uh, this is his last race before they retire him. And uh, another Allosaurus and uh, yeah, I didn't even gonna try that one. But several different breeds of dinosaurs and they're all brightly decorated and painted and they got ribbons and their riders are um, showing off as well these people are clearly insane <laughs> I'm right next to him cheering my head off with the waving the flag and everything okay uh, I mean I was kind of referring to I mean to the there are people riding these things Yes, they are riding the dinosaurs. And I'm I'm saying this in part as a player and in part as Doran is just kind of musing out loud. Like, 
some of these things clearly want to eat the other ones. So the people who are on the carnivores have should have a clear advantage. And the people who are riding the herbivores, which are which seem to be significantly slower, are basically asking for death. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. Um, and, you know, uh, talking to the other members of the crowd um, behind you, um, or around you, um, um, a, a typical race day has th uh, three separate races. One for the four-legged beast, one for the two-legged beast, and a no-holds-bar unchained race. And uh, you can see that all the dinosaurs are juveniles because, you know, full-grown versions are just too large and too difficult for the um, riders to manage. And yeah, you I can don't think any of us would really know that last part, <laughs> would we? Um, no, not really, but unless you heard other people talking about it, because, uh, like I said, um, Scarback, you know, it's his last race just because he's getting too difficult to control. And you can see that they're muzzled, they're muzzled, uh, their claws and horns uh, all have uh, protect, protective caps on them to, you know, prevent goring and gouging and whatnot. And that they stay on except for the... Um, the unchained race. Um, dinosaurs and the riders are not really permitted to attack each other except during the unchained race and then anything can happen. Well, that should be interesting. <laughs> Very and, interesting. <laughs> and, and Bjorn just like nonchalantly grabs the axe that is not theoretically silver and just sort of casually examines it before putting it away again. <laughs> okay. And, uh... <laughs> After being in the crowd for a while, um, you can tell that everyone's getting ready for the race. And um, you can see that the streets are starting to clear and people are on the sidewalks and on balconies and everything else looking down upon the race course. And... Uh, you hear a, a horn blow that signifies that the first race is about to begin. What do I keep thinking of the pod races in Star Wars with the little kid and the <laughs> You know, the young T-Rex. That T-Rex is going to grow up and start, I don't know, pumping a triceratops. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be doing something to a triceratops, but Senator, that ain't it. Senator, yeah, Senator Triceratops is finally gonna wait her chance to be a pedophile. Pedophile atops or whatever. <laughs> Petasaurus, the Petasaurus and the young T Rex. Open up since he's old enough. Uh, yeah. okay, just just watch out for the Gropasaurus. The Gropasaurus. <laughs> <laughs> Rex. Let's leave Joe Biden out of this. <laughs> <laughs> With his tiny little T-Rex arm. <laughs> Sniffing hair. 
Okay. Hey, Sean showed up. <laughs> yeah, hey. Sean showed up. <laughs> when hey. Start weird and then the, the clerk <laughs> What are you guys talking about? Inappropriate touching between adults. Well, wait a minute. I'm the priest. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, first up is the four legged race with the young ankylosauruses and the triceratops and the Dimitri Dimitridons. And the horn blows and the crowd starts yelling and you see all these di uh, four-legged dinosaurs uh, start running out and you know even though they can't attack one another there's some bumping and shoving and you know ex just what you would expect in a race and that's what Too. I assume as a pop culture reference, there's some sort of very large magical viewing device that's showing us all the action even when the dinosaurs are out of sight. Uh, yeah, you, you've you got heralds that are uh, yelling what the race is and, you know, you've got a pretty good view of uh, the start line and it circles around through the city and you know you're also at the finish line and the crowd just goes wild and they are um, are, are any of you familiar with Spike Jones? <laughs> the movie director <laughs> or the dinosaur? <laughs> no, the old, the really old uh, comedy music is like might as like might as well be fucking Looney Tunes type thing. One of their one of their songs. It's not really a song. Is like is a horse race and it's basically the, like half of it is just like a vocal thing is the guy is being a horse doing the, an impression of a, an announcer at a horse race and he's like all these horses have stupid names that go with things that are happening like uh, cabbage is coming out ahead toothpaste is being squeezed out on the <laughs> rail and long underwear is falling down behind <laughs> Uh, that's good. I don't even want to know what took a crap is doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> What's that horse doing? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, 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 it starts out really strong. All of them are neck to neck, and eventually they... They round a corner and they're out of sight and you have people uh, relaying the information back and uh, Uptow's favorite Exorus and Grung Stopper uh, pull ahead and as they're rounding the final corner that you know you can see them they're almost neck and neck and all the other dinosaurs in the race have, have fallen behind it's going to be down between Uptow's favorite and the grung stopper and the crowd's just really yelling 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 and Uptow's favorite is the first 
the cross and this young triceratops uh, the crowds just going wild because this is like the fourth race in a row that Uptown's favorite has won uh oh somebody's cheating <laughs> And you know you can, uh, and the the race announcers talking about yeah that was a good race and uh, very little damage to the city this time, and uh, we'll be right back here very shortly with our next race, and Big Honker is. <clears throat> the favorite to win because once again uh, he's he's just everyone's favorite and he's he's not on as big of a streak as Uptow's favorite but he's won quite a few of the uh, of the races here in the past and you hear the announcing horn the horn blow again announcing the uh, the next race will be beginning in a minute and the crowd's excitement just goes wild and uh, you've got other people in the audience like Diego uh, waving their little banners and <laughs> flags and you know uh, women showing uh, pulling up their tops as the jock jockeys walk by and <laughs> the dinosaurs pulling up their tops. <laughs> oh God! Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that'll teach you not to pay attention. <laughs> Triceratops! Oh my God, she's gonna be ah. T Rex can't feel her up because he's got those tiny little arms. <laughs> so. so the next race begins, and. They divide the races by the number of legs, but they don't really give you a, uh... <laughs> hey, this dinosaur has this many legs. Isn't four pretty standard, other than T-Rex? A Velociraptor. Oh, well, there's another two bipedal, I guess. And that is a... So you're saying if Triceratops was bipedal, but... And... Open image... And I'm gonna paste a link in, uh... Discord of one of the uh, <laughs> other two-legged dinosaurs, but this race is um, mainly the T. Rexes, uh, Hadasaurus, and uh, this furry little guy. <laughs> so. Uh, once again, it starts off, and in the end, it comes down to um, just a couple dinosaurs uh, in the final stretch, and you got Big Honker and Jungle Princess, and Big Honker is a young T-Rex, and Jungle Princess is the one that's in uh, Discord there. And in the end, uh, Jungle Princess just wins by, you know, just the tip of the nose. And the crowd goes wild at... Uh, and gentleman sitting near you just jumps up and down and I mean he's ecstatic and he's like hell yeah 
I won. She paid off five to one. <laughs> And everyone's very happy. And uh, they're like, uh, yeah, we're going to take a uh, intermission here and prepare for the race that you've all come to see. The unchained race. All the dinosaurs. No holds barred. Racing. I like the first game better because uh, they skipped the dinosaur race because people in the world were dying and time was of the essence. <laughs> so, the third race gets ready to begin and you can tell that the crowds have gotten larger in size and you know, there, there's people like standing out on the street because the sidewalks are so crowded and, you know, they don't seem to care. And Aren't the they not supposed to be doing that? Well, you, you know, it's kind of like a parade where you know, you kind of encroach just a little bit. <laughs> and you're pretty sure that they've seen enough races to realize the danger that they're in. But, you know, a lot of people just don't care. They want that first-hand, up-close view. And... Oh, I hope they fed those T-Rexes. <laughs> And you can see all the dinosaurs are lined up and you see that the muzzles are off and the uh, the blunt coverings to their claws and talons are taken off. And they like three people much. have been gouged out already. <laughs> if they feed them too much, then they'll be slower. That's true. And which one did they say was getting harder to control? <laughs> um, back, I think. Yes. Well, that's yes. the one that I'm keeping my eye on. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what's going to happen here. The uncontrollable T Rex. Yeah. <laughs> The horn blows and they take off from the starting line. And after, you know, probably 40 feet down, um, <laughs> the Allosaurus that they call bone cruncher uh, you can tell the the jockey is having a hard time controlling this allosaurus and it slides out of the middle of the road and starts getting close to the crowd and his head swings down and next thing you know He's he's got one of the audience in his mouth, <laughs> and you can see him chomping while he's running, and uh, um. <laughs> Wait, do I not know what an allosaurus is? I thought those were herbivores. No, allosaurus are like mini T Rexes. Okay, I might have been thinking of the wrong thing, but never mind. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, thank you for a lot of non-information on that page. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, yeah, they are definitely uh, carnivores. <laughs> Actually, I got my monster manual over here. I can just use that. <laughs> And you can see the jockeys trying to convince the dinosaur by beating to let go of this uh, person currently in the jaws of doom. And uh, you hear the crowd screaming even more that, you know, this is part of the reason they come to see the dinosaur races that you know sometimes they do go berserk <laughs> oh yes this is quite a show <laughs> I was thinking of an ankylosaurus <laughs> and um They they go out a distance and yeah you know you hear the announcers call the race, uh you know it's Nasty Boy and Grung Stopper and then Banana Candy is coming up and Bone Crunchers falling uh way behind and. <laughs> and they do this every week. Every week. I'm surprised there's. <coughs> I'm surprised there's anyone here left. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's a big draw, and uh, you know, not every week does an animal go berserk or uh, someone gets eaten. <laughs> and then an eight-year-old runs by in his pod. <laughs> and. <clears throat> In the end, <laughs> uh, you can see the big honker is uh, leading the pack. Uh, he's at least two, maybe two and a half lengths of dinosaur ahead of the pack. And as he crosses the... Uh, finish line you know you hear people chant big honker big honker big honker <laughs> and <laughs> what the hell is that oh. <laughs> it's, <banana candy. laughs> it's a real thing I'm telling you <laughs> what is yeah, it? the, Why wouldn't the it runts or something yeah yes uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. <laughs> That's what they say. Yeah. Very, get him for a quarter out of the little thing. Okay, Steph. You might as well do a Google search. Is there a porn by the same name? No, no. <laughs> no. These are all strangers on the internet. They can search their own porn. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that and say that last we thing, did. Last thing I need is to get an email from Fantasy Graham. <laughs> okay. But the banana candy was sick. <laughs> uh, absolutely. So you you know, there's a lot of celebration, and that the that the uh, the crowd is just really excited that the favorite won again, and yeah, uh, you know, the jockeys uh, they end up. Uh, putting the dinosaurs in the pen and you know they're out for autographs and so forth and people are drinking and it's just a massive party in the streets what would y'all like to do now <laughs> well I well, might uh... Does. This might enjoy the party a bit or, or or something and then not I don't have anything I really need to do tonight. Yeah, I'm in the same boat there. Do we need to bring Sean up to speed or does he know what uh what's He'll figure out on the way, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Unless he needs anything. Sean, do you need anything for your character? Like you need to know what um, we, we we are or 
So I have one character in, and the fighter is already loaded in. I don't know what class you need it, though. Well, whatever you want to play, obviously, but uh, I'm a rogue, uh, and then uh, Bjorn is a fighter, and uh, Moltuk is a druid, if that means anything to you. So you want a cleric? If you if you want to be a cleric, go ahead. You mentioned that you play a lot of clerics and that you like clerics, so go ahead, but don't feel forced. I'll have to transfer a cleric in then. So hold on. So it'll take me a little while. Uh, really, that's uh. And this is a good place to stop the game at for tonight, and we can bring uh, him up to speed, and then next week uh, we'll actually start the excursion into the jungle. Does that work for you all? Sounds good. Yep, hopefully yep. By, hopefully by next week I will finally stop giggling at the thought of a dinosaur named Banana Hammock, or Banana Candy, or whatever. <laughs> Banana, I think you just made it worse, bro. <laughs> Banana hammock is for the win. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, that's a Freudian slip there. But anyway, you, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, you guys understand. So. Cool, okay, well, hey, it was, it was a very fun first session. So our next session is a week from today, right? Uh, no. Uh, next session is next week. And then we're off for a week. That's what I said, a week from today. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, okay. yes, All you're right. right. <laughs> like, no, not a week from today, next week. <laughs> oh, okay. Well. Yes, this time, next week, a week from today. <laughs> the morning after tomorrow. <laughs> that banana candy thing just threw you off. You're, you're uh, flustered. Uh, absolutely. I, I'm just picturing a a dinosaur wearing a banana hammock. <laughs> I must now go to Photoshop. I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, no I problem. Totally <laughs> yeah, what do they call that thing? A mankini? I could put yeah. a mankini. Can you stop, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steph. You got I stuff to do. That. Get busy. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. Let's see, man. Uh, that was funny. <laughs>